Good morning and welcome to Bethel Baptist Church. Good to see everybody this morning. As you can tell, things are a little bit different. And, and yes, I, I have compromised and um, I, am, I am wearing one of the over-the-ear microphones. I'm trying to get used to it this morning because we're going to be using these uh, with, uh, with VBS. It's a whole lot easier to move around and do things without a trying to try not, not catch that microphone and fly it off my tire or something. So, but I'm trying to get used to this, and, and uh, it's a new stage. Hey, what you think about it? It's pretty nice. The ladies did a great job setting that up. And all we need now are uh, some fog machines and a few, uh, few ambient light colors in the background. On the, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll fit in with everybody else. So, but, uh, but no, it's, uh, it, it's been good. It was a good day yesterday. Everybody working together, getting stuff done. We are pretty much uh, ready. I say pretty much because you're never fully ready for VBS. But we're pretty much ready. Looking forward to VBS starting tomorrow night. But right now, let's all take our hymn books. Let's turn to hymn 220. Let's all stand and let's sing He Lives, hymn 220. On the first, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer, and just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You Ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart on that third. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian. Lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, He lives, salvation to impart. Ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Amen. Brother Kenneth Junkins, will you open us up in prayer? Amen. You can be seated. Let me give you just a, a couple of announcements very quickly. Of course, uh, we, we will not have adult choir practice this, this afternoon, so uh, now don't y'all get in, getting too used to all this. Um, no choir coming up in the morning, no choir coming up tonight, no choir practice. All right, we'll, we'll kick it back into gear the next Sunday when everything is back open to us, but um, we won't have a choir practice this afternoon. Um, the uh, men's ladies prayer time, we, we will still have that at 540 just prior to the evening service. Um, and of course, Saturday visitation, we'll still have that this week. It you know, will be long week, uh, VBS and all, and, but, uh, we, our plan is to still get out there, uh, come Saturday morning and do a little bit of, uh, door knock, at least going out and putting some tracks on some doors. And so if you can help us out with that. We meet at 9.30 on Saturday mornings, and uh, we leave by around 10 o'clock, spend about an hour or so out there, and if you can be a part of that, it'd be a big help. But uh, now my wife, tonight, uh, the 540 prayer meeting, um, she is not necessarily going to be having prayer time. She wants to meet with all the ladies that would like to go. I think y'all have been talking about it. Most of you have heard about it by now, I think. Um, but if not, if you're interested, you can come to the meeting anyways. Um, but uh, there is a, um, a ladies' meeting 
that, uh, that we're looking at our ladies going to. My wife's going to be uh, taking all of y'all. And if you're interested in going to that, that ladies, it's kind of a, is it a Friday, Saturday thing? Friday night, Saturday morning? And so it's a Friday night, Saturday morning kind of thing. And so uh, if, ladies, if you're interested in going to a little ladies retreat and being a part of that, then uh, try to be here at 540. And uh, in the ladies meeting tonight, the prayer time, she'll be going over that and, and, and trying to get lined out who all wants to go and let y'all know a little bit more about it. And so um, just us fellas, some of, most of us fellas went fishing. We've done different things. And, um, and so she's been wanting to take y'all to a ladies' meeting for a while now, and, and one opened up that should be a really good one. So if you can come be a part of that, that would be great. 540, she'll meet with the ladies about that. Then go, don't forget, VBS is this week from 6 o'clock until 8 o'clock every evening. And so uh, there are still some more flyers out there in, in the foyer. So do try to grab those flyers, get them out. Um, our uh, Facebook uh, post that went out is, uh, is still going today and it will go tomorrow. So um, we, we kind of stretched it out over several days of, of going and, and posting ads in, in different places on Facebook. And, uh, and so we've already had from that, though, we've already had, uh, um, I think, right at or a little over 150 um, people that it's now it's already it's it's, it's hit close to 2000 um, when it comes to the number of people it got to. But um, but we've already had like a, right around 150 people uh, click through it or respond to it. It takes it, it takes note of every time somebody uses the links that we have on there and takes to the website, things of that nature. And so we've had a lot of, uh, if you look at it, uh, a lot of action uh, when it comes to that. If, if you consider every time, possibility of every time somebody has clicked through, it's a new family, a new different person. Um, they could have one, two, three, four kids. Who knows? And um, that could be a lot of folks with interest. So let's just keep praying that the Lord will, uh, will bring in uh, a good number of young people that will have a smooth and enjoyable uh, VBS and kind of starting off, cr cranking off our, our new yearly, um, or should say, as they put it, annual VBS. And so um, we'll just trust the Lord to do what we cannot, but we're going to get busy and make sure that we, uh, we do our part as well, which, as you can tell, is obvious. Everybody's pitching in. And I do want to say a big thank you to all those that came out uh, for the VBS meeting that we had last Sunday. We had a, a room full over there. Uh, in, where the men normally pray, and, um, and that was a blessing. All the folks looking to be involved and help out. Uh, many hands make it a much easier job to handle, and so thank you so much for those interested in helping us. Um, also, uh, yesterday we had we had a really good crowd yesterday for the fish fry. That was that was awesome, um, and so I think I think my wife counted up around sixty, uh, almost sixty people. We're out there with the fish fry and, uh, and everything, had a good time of fellowship. Uh, a few of us, a few of the ladies threw around horseshoes. That was entertaining. Um, but, um, but some of us guys were, were playing the cornhole game, things of that nature. And most of you just sat around and, and fellowship and talked, and that, that was wonderful as well. Thank you to all those um, who, who cooked. I know Brother Sandy, uh, they're, they're not here this morning. They're, they're traveling, I believe. But um, Brother Sandy... Uh, did a lot in, in cooking the, the french fries. Brother Ed Armstrong did the hush puppies. They were excellent. Um, and, uh, and then I know Brother uh, David Taylor uh, cooked the, the hamburgers and might have been a few other folks that were involved. And just thank you to all those that cooked and put it together. Um, and that, that just helped to make it that much more successful of a time of fellowship. And so I just appreciate everybody that came out and enjoyed that. But um, with all that, I don't think there's anything else that I have uh, on the list here. And so we're just going to move on this morning in, in our service. Let's take our hymn books once again. Now, again, the choir is not up here to sing. And so I just added in an extra song for us to sing as a con congregation. All right. We're going to go to the song, which is our theme, our purpose for this entire year. Hymn 66. Hymn 66, To God Be the Glory. We'll sing hymn 66, a couple of verses of this, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll turn to another one. We'll just do a little extra uh, singing this morning. So if you got hymn 66, let's all sing together. You can stay seated. You don't have to stand. At least not for this one. On the first. 
to God be the glory, great things he had done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. All come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he had done on the last great thing. He hath taught us great things He hath done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear Him. Voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He has done. Take your hymn book again, let's go to, over to hymn 409. Hymn 409. We'll all stand for this when the ushers will come at the end of, of this song to receive our offering. Hymn 409, I Know Whom I Have Believed. Let's all stand. Let's sing on the first. Actually, the ushers won't come. We'll sing and then we'll, we'll go ahead and do some handshake. Let's sing the first verse. I know not why God's wondrous grace to me he hath made known. Nor why unworthy Christ in love redeemed me for his own. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day on the second. I know not how this saving grace to me he did impart, nor how believing in his word brought peace within my heart. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able that which I've committed unto him against that day. Take a second, shake hands with somebody next to you. Greet our visitors.
God, as you find your way back to your seat, we get ready to receive our offering. Let's sing that last verse together, and then we'll pray over the offering. Here we go on the fourth. I know not when my Lord may come at night or noonday fair, nor if I'll walk the veil with him or meet him in the air. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able that which I've committed unto him against that day. Amen. Well, as we get ready to receive our offering this morning, let me give you another statement by George Mueller. He said, A servant of God has but one master. It ill becomes a servant to seek to be rich and great and honored in that world where his Lord was poor and meek and despised. Think about it. I know that doesn't, that doesn't set too, too easily on, on the heart of individuals, especially on this flesh. But um, in a place where the Lord did not seek to be rich, did not seek to be popular, and definitely didn't receive all the accolades of the world. He did for a small little little time, and, and it wasn't very very few days after that they turned on him and were yelling, crucify. Well, if the Lord was rejected, if what he stood for was rejected, if everything that he did was for others and not for himself, then how can we do anything but the same? How can we expect any more than the same? If we truly serve the Lord as our master, if God is my Lord and Savior, then I should be willing to face whatever comes my way to be able to represent him, even as Christ himself represented his Father on a daily basis. So we need to be, be very mindful of that. It doesn't mean that God doesn't want us to have money. It doesn't mean that God doesn't want us to be known or to have the respect of folks around us. It just means we should be seeking his glory, not our own, on a daily basis. And again, this time to give back to the Lord as he's given to us is just another way to show the Lord that he is first in my life. He takes preeminence in my life, and therefore I will give him what is due him. And this is just one of those areas, not, not a big one either, just a, one of those consistent areas that we can show the Lord how much we follow, love him, and serve him. So let's just uh, take, take this to heart. In that area of what George Mueller, a man that knew what it was to live as the Lord provided and only as the Lord provided. A very, very, very strong man of God. But uh, let's pray. We'll have some blessing on the offering this morning. And Brother Jerome, if you don't mind, pray for us.
that on? All right. Got to walk real, real careful on this stuff up here. Now, I was thinking earlier, I said, this, this little AstroTurf type stuff up here, this, this rollout grass, the only thing to improve it would be this, this large orange longhorn right in the middle. It would be great. And, uh, I, and I'm sorry. The letter A with some kind of a circle around, I don't know. It just would, the longhorn, that'd be the one to do. But all right. Victoria's going to sing for us this morning just prior to the message. It's not what I prayed for, it's not what I wanted, it's not something I understand. I see from my circumstances seem so confusing, I'm placing it all in your hand. Your ways are higher than mine. I want mountains to move. You want me to climb. So I'm gonna trust your work, your will, and your time. Your ways are higher than mine. One day I'm sure I will look back and marvel And how you knew best all along You see from heaven, you know it's the hard times That make my faith steady and strong Your ways are higher than mine mountains to move you want me to climb so I'm gonna trust your work your will and your time your ways are higher than mine when I start to doubt help me believe somewhere so far above me your ways are higher than mine I want mountains to move you want me to climb so I'm gonna trust your work your will and your time your ways are so much higher than mine your ways are higher than mine all right if you got your bibles we are done with our fantastic fish findings, and so we're not going there this morning again, but uh, we're going to go to Psalm chapter 144. Psalm 144. And I am starting preaching before 1130. Something just doesn't feel right. <laughs> Psalm 144. We're going to look at one verse. It is actually the verse that we are using. Uh, this is our verse of the week this week. And, um, and so for the church as a whole, this is our focus verse uh, for, for the next several days. But um, looking at, at this verse, we're going to basically start here, but we're going to go to other passages uh, to bring about the, the entirety of the, the message and the thought this morning. <coughs> But uh, Psalm 144 in verse number 15. Tells us to say 144, 15. Hold on. Oh, there it is. Oh, look at the wrong chapter. That helps when you need new glasses. Okay. But Psalm 144, verse number 15. Here it is. Happy is that people that is in such a case. Now, that, that references the verses prior to this. I'm not going to read at this time. 
But the Lord begins to talk about uh, in this, I should say, the Lord, the, the psalmist David is, is reflecting on and talking about the goodness of the Lord and what he has done in very specific ways and, and how he has, has taken care of and blessed his people. And so he says, happy is that people that is in such a case. But here's the key. Happy, yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. And that really is our focus to a degree this morning in looking at three keys to happiness. Now, throughout the Bible, there are multiple things we can look at that re reflect on what brings joy, what brings a happiness, or as, as the Bible describes many times, is the happy is this person, a happy uh, are these people. It all has to do with certain elements that has brought about that happiness or that joy. But uh, we're going to look at, at three simple keys to happiness based off of the understanding that, yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. And so let's pray and we'll look at these simple three, three keys that help us to understand how we can be happy, no matter what it is that we're facing or going through in life. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be in your house. Thank you for your people that are here. We do pray for those uh, who might be traveling and Lord, those who are sick and not able to be with us, you know the different reasons. And I pray that you would, Lord, bring them uh, a comfort. And uh, Lord, those that are traveling, bring them protection. I pray that you'd meet with us this morning that are here in your house. And I pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit would have free reign to work in our hearts and also to apply what we've heard to our lives. That we, Lord, would not leave here the same as we came, but we would leave challenged to do more in the next hours of this day and even the days of this week. And we pray that you just do a work in our hearts, meet with us in a very real way this morning. We'll be careful to give you the honor and glory for what you do in Christ's name. Amen. Looking here at the three keys, and we're, we're going to turn over. Uh, matter of fact, why don't you go ahead and take your Bibles. I'm going I'm to have you turn to these passages with me because uh, I don't have a lot of notes on this. All right? I know that doesn't really mean much of anything, but... Um, but I don't, I don't have a lot of notes, but I do have some passages we're going to turn to together. So John chapter 13, if you go to John chapter 13, the first thing in dealing with the three keys to happiness, blessed are they, or happy are they that whose God is the Lord. Happy is that people whose God is the Lord. So in looking at that, there are three things that, uh, that we can learn by these keys. We can learn to be happy in life and and listen, happiness in most people's minds is, is finding the right things, finding the right people, finding the right places. Um, there are a whole bunch of people. We went uh, Friday with the, with the teenagers. Not quite sure how, how good of an idea that was. But um, I mean, the, we are actually, Brother Butch is very happy right now because uh, his wife came back unable to speak. And, um, and so she, she lost her voice in screaming. However, he did pay the price to, to have the silence in the home. Well, no, he's still got three dogs. You know, that, no, he's, no silence still. But, um, but no, he, he, he got to sit by her on the roller coasters the first few times. The very first roller coaster, uh, she just about passed out. We had to remind her that you can't scream one consistent long scream of letting out all the air in your lungs. You have to breathe. And by the time we got to the end of the roller coaster, she's like, <gasps> we're like, what's wrong with you? She's like, I almost passed out. Breathe. But uh, <clears throat> it, I will say this. If you, you go to some place, the roller coaster with Miss Sandy, uh, you'll have fun just watching her turn blue. And, uh, but uh, we, we had a good time. But here, here's the one thing that you notice. There's a lot of people that go to theme parks, go to, to uh, unfortunately, some, some go to the bars, some go to the, lots of different, they go to lots of places trying to find what will make them happy. Now, I'll, I'll be honest with you, it, uh, we, we got out there and we were, we were joking about it, um, we got on that, that first roller coaster and we started going and we went up, 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 and then when we dropped off and you had that massive rush, first thing that went through my mind was, oh, this is what fun is! 
because I, I was so tired and wore out and like, you know, it hadn't gotten away for a while. But it, it was a lot. We, we got a, a big joke and a laugh out of it, um, talking about getting to actually experience fun again and not just work. But, um, you know, and they, sometimes we all feel like that. We need a break, right? Everybody needs a break. Everybody's got to get away for a little bit. Just remember that life is more than just wake up, go to work, you know, come home dead tired, eat and go to sleep, get up, wake up, you know, go back to work. After a while, it gets very mundane. But people, people start looking for everything under the sun to make them happy. And we've talked a little bit about this before, but um, people go to multiple different sources, and when they can't find it in a job, when they can't find it in money, when they can't find it in people, they can't find it in places, many times they'll turn to drugs. They turn to the alcohol. They turn to, to whatever it is that can help them remove the, the, the things they think are barriers to their happiness. And therefore, if I can't remember it, if I can't think about it, if I just want to, I just want to be happy, man. Okay, if, if that's the way people start uh, start getting. Okay, they start looking at all the different things that are going to remove the barriers of happiness, thinking that's going to actually reveal joy, reveal happiness. When actually, in the end, it just brings about more sorrow. It, it bears, it places heavier burdens over time than what they were expecting. So. What is true happiness? Well, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Why? Because number one, the first key to finding genuine happiness is learning how to fret not. How to fret not. How, how can we go through life not having a fretful spirit, a fretful mentality? Well, you can look here in John 13 verse 1 through 4 and see Jesus' reaction. Our Lord and Savior. Happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Here is Christ, God in the flesh. Here is his reaction to a future event that is probably, uh, honestly, if we were to look at this, would be a devastating thing in our life, period. But the Lord knew what he was facing. But look what, in verse number 1 of, of chapter 13, it says, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world in unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Goes on to say in verse number 3, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. Now, you say, what's going on here? Well, what's, what's the big deal? How, how does that represent a, a non-fretful mentality? Very simple. The Lord knew where he's headed. He knew his, his hour had come. He had told them many times as the Pharisees sought to, to take him and they, they sought to lay hands on him. They wanted to do away with him. There were many a times where the Lord had, had no problems whatsoever. He said, my hour has not come. They can't touch me. They can't do this. Uh, there were times when he left the city. Why? Because he knew what was in the minds and the hearts of the people that were in charge. He knew what they were wanting to do. And he said, my hour has not yet come. They, this can't happen yet. But at this point, point, the Bible tells us that Jesus knew his hour had come. He knew that he was about to go and he was about to face the cross, all that came with it, all the agony, all the torture. And then on top of all that, once he had survived what honestly no human being outside of the power of God sustaining him, no human being could have lived through what they put him through. Most people would have died on the whipping post, receiving the 39 lashes, the, save, the, the 40 save one. Uh, most of them would have died just from the blood loss in that area. But then to go through the mockery and the, and the torture beyond that, 
And then to have to carry his own cross up to Golgotha for the sole purpose of being hung on that cross to die a death of suffocation. There's no reason why he should have survived the whipping. There's no reason that he should have survived the beatings. There's no reason that he should have survived carrying that cross. And in the end, uh, there's no reason why he should have survived as long as he did on the cross. And yet until the job was finished, listen, he took all of that on him and the knowledge of knowing that he was going to be taking on not just the pain but he would be then taking on every sin of not just what you're living today of not just your past and not of just you and me but taking on every sin that would ever be committed by any person that would ever live throughout all of history past a present of that time and future which is where we are today he was taking every sin every bit of it it was going to carry all of that on him and during that time frame during that moment knowing that should not the father choose to to let that cup pass from him there would be a time when the father and the son during that worst moment during that that hardest uh, job that he was going to do in bearing our sin on the cross during that time the father would have to turn his back and he'd be there all alone Now, he knew all of that was coming. He knew every bit of that was his very near future, even matter of hours. And yet, what did he do? He didn't start sweating it out, which I do very regularly. Even without having to worry about things, I just sweat like crazy. He didn't have to sweat it out. He didn't get all worried, start biting his fingernails. He didn't start talking to everybody around him about, oh, do you know what's going about to happen? Oh, my goodness, this is, oh, this is going to get really bad. Oh, y'all pray for me. Okay. That's not what he did. Jesus, during his knowledge of what was coming, he merely took a towel, girded himself, and what he's about to do is he's about to wash the feet of his disciples. In the moment of knowing what was coming in his life, He was more worried about serving those he loved than about focusing on what was to come in his own personal life. He is a perfect example of learning how not to fret in the moment of things that we know we're about to face. Oh, what if this and what if that? Oh, maybe this is not going to go good. Oh, this could possibly destroy everything. And listen, every single one of us know what it is to fret, what it is to worry about life and about things going just so so lord showed us listen even in his hour of knowledge of what was coming he was still more worried more concerned with his serving those he cared about so instead of worrying and fretting about the future he just girded himself and loved on those that he was going to be leaving here pretty soon Jesus didn't fret when facing the cross. He focused on love. Just like we should learn not to fret when bearing the cross. We had to bear our cross. Say, take up thy cross daily and follow me. Listen, we had to take up that cross. We bear crosses of life uh, all throughout our existence. But we shouldn't fret about the bearing of our crosses. We should focus on his love to us. If you focus on how much he loves us, then you can understand that he desires to yoke up with us and help us bear the cross. Shouldn't have to fret and worry when I have the creator of all the world right beside me. Shouldn't have to fret about what I'm going to face when the one who's allowing it and has filtered it and is in control of it is right beside me. Doesn't mean that this flesh doesn't want to fret. I just have to learn how to allow the spirit to overcome the flesh. Learn from my Savior. First key to the happiness, learning how not to fret. How about this? Fate not. We fret not, he loves us. We know that, so we don't have to fret about it. We faint not, why? Because he promises to hold us. And and let me just, I'll read these. And and why don't you turn to Hebrews chapter 12. Y'all go to Hebrews chapter 12, and I'm going to go over real quick. To Psalm 139. Hebrews chapter 12 and Psalm 139. 
We'll read these and how he holds us. We don't have to faint. We shouldn't faint. If we faint, we're out. Listen, if you're running a race, you've got to run consistently. You can't drop out and hope that in the end it's just all going to work out. We've got to stay in the race. You've got to keep going. Happiness is, is continuing when things even aren't as happy as you wish. How about this? Uh, Psalm 139, verse 7 through verse number 18 says this. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Even in your darkest moments of life, the Lord can still illuminate so that the darkness is not as, eff as effective as the world would have it to be or as Satan would have it to be. He can still bring about the light. In other words, the Bible even tells us here, he can make the darkness as though it was light. In the darkest hours, we can walk through as though there is no darkness uh, hovering over us. And looking down here, verse number 12, Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day, and the darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret, and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book of all my members, uh, were, thy book, all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet they were, there was none of them. Or how precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I, that, that, that's a verse we ought to use, we're going to use one of these days when it comes to our verse for the week. Um, how precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God, how great is the sum of them. How about verse number 18? If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. What a wondrous passage right there, those few verses talking about how the Lord in our time, when we could be weak, when we could fail, the Lord is there with a promise to uphold, the promise to help us not to faint, not to quit. Over in Hebrews, you're, you're there already, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 through 3, it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy, there it is, the joy, the happiness that was set before him, uh, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Listen, if you can't handle life, if life is just throwing more at you than you think you can take, consider him. Consider the one who, for the joy, the, the happiness, the excitement. Listen, there's nothing exciting about the cross. But he wasn't looking at the cross. He was looking at what the cross was going to bring. Uh, listen, sometimes we face things in life and it's not going to bring happiness. But we can, instead of looking at the circumstance, we can look at what God might want to do through the circumstance. Instead of looking at the problem, we can look at what God has planned to help me with through the problem. How can I learn? How can I I grow how, how much if, if God loves me this much that he desires to let this come into my life and he desires to bring these things through uh, through my life or to bring me through these things in life there must be some plan there must be a purpose there's got to be something special something specific that he has designed for me and when I think about what he wants to do with me it's not the worrying. It's not the desire. Oh, I just don't know if I'm going to make. I think I'm going to faint through this one. It's not the focus 
on the problem or the storm or the issues. It's learning how to focus on the purpose and on the reason and on what God might have planned. How can he, what, what is he going to do? Man, as bad as this is, it can be exciting to think about it. there's something he's going to use this for. And think about it, the worse of a situation it is, the more God has planned to use it. I'll just be honest with you. Some of the worst, dire situations, some of the worst things that families have gone through and people have gone through in the end have been some of the greatest opportunities to see people get saved, see people get challenged to do more for God, to, to have people be able to use their testimony in powerful ways. But I, I, I think of the, um, uh, the um, family, uh, 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 Westco family, Miss Westco. Man, how tragic, how awful in our eyes to, to go so long and, 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 and to work so hard in raising the money to get to the mission field and get there where your heart is, where your desire is, and, and to see things just start to really get going and not there for very long. And then your husband gets shot as you're driving through town just doing simple routine stuff and for him to get shot and to die. And yet when you look at all the circumstances, if, if you heard uh, Brother Sinclair talk about it, uh, he talked about how it did not make sense how that uh, the, the back window didn't shatter and, or, or how that his son was, was right behind him. His wife was, was over the other side and, and everybody else walked out with almost no issues uh, other than maybe a little a few cuts or whatever from glass. But uh, some, of, some of the most amazing things you look at and say, that doesn't make sense. How can how could he get hit with a bullet uh, and all that was taking place and, and how can that happen and yet nobody else receive any other problems? It, it just seems so unbelievable unreal so impossible that it could happen that way and yet when you look at it God had a plan he had a purpose it wouldn't be our plan it wouldn't be the way we would have asked for it to be I guarantee it wasn't the way the West Coast were planning on it and what they wanted to have happen and yet look what has happened with the time the Sin I think of the Sinclairs as well uh, being a missionary on the field needing help God finally sent help and look what happened how can God get any glory from this? How can this be any good? How, how in the world can, can, can this, uh, in any way, shape, or form, uh, can God use this to, to do anything other than this a tragedy that's seen? Yeah, but here's the thing. In the greatest of tragedies, God takes those great tragedies and gives a much better, listen, a much larger potential of use. Not that we would desire it, but when things take place, you say, I've never, never, never faced what I'm facing today. It's heavier, it's bigger, it's harder than anything I've ever faced in my life. Just consider. Don't faint. Don't quit. If it's bigger than you've ever faced in your life, just consider that it has bigger potential than anything you've ever had in your life as well. You say, that's real easy to say, preacher. Harder to live. I fully understand that. It's still truth. Faint not. Fret not because, listen, he loves you. Faint not because he promised to hold you. Here's the last one. Fear not. The last key to happiness, fear not. Listen, if you're fretting, you can't be happy. If you're, if you're falling out and fainting over the things, you're, you, you can't find happiness. You're never going to be happy when you quit. It, just, it doesn't happen. Oh, if I just get out of this, I'll be happy. No, once you quit, something else will hit you. Or once you quit, down the road, you're going to look back and wish you hadn't. You always find what, what you think is going to bring happiness. If it goes apart from what God teaches us and how we're to face life, how we're to face issues, how we're to trust him. In the end, if we don't follow his plan, we, we won't find happiness. We'll find regret. The last one being fear not. Fear not. Why? Because he keeps you. Happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Why? Because we can fret not knowing he loves us. We can faint not knowing he holds us. We can fear not knowing that he's promised to keep us. In Psalm, I'm going to go back and forth. Just a couple more verses. Psalm 121. Psalm 121 in verse, uh, verse 1 through 5 here. 
It says this, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, Jehovah, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee, there, there, now watch that, he that keepeth thee will not slumber. That, that's, that's less of a promise and more of an exclamation of statement. It's already in existence. He's not going to keep you. He's not promising to one day get, get around to you. It's just automatic. He that keepeth thee. Period. It's what God does. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall never slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. It is an absolute fact that we serve a God that promises to keep his children. Doesn't mean he keeps us from trouble. Doesn't mean he keeps us from issues. Doesn't mean he keeps us from heartache. He keeps us as, as a protection. He places us within his hands. Listen, I don't have to worry about where I am when I'm in the middle of God's will. I don't have to worry about will he hold me up? Will he lift me up? Will he be walking with me? When I am in the middle of his will, I'm exactly where he wants me to be and he keeps me. He protects me. It is what he does. He is the shepherd of the sheep. We're, we were dealing with that on Wednesday nights, dealing with uh, uh, Je the Jehovah titles. We're dealing with uh, Jehovah God, my shepherd from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. We started that Wednesday. He keeps, he's the keeper of the sheep. That keeper of the sheep protects, watches over, guards, loves on we don't have to fear because we can know and be confident that he as the good shepherd keeps us. And lastly, Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26, verse number 3 and verse number 4. Isaiah 26, verse 3 and 4. Now watch. Here is the prerequisite, if you want to put it that way, of truly understanding the Lord God who keeps us, our shepherd, experiencing the peace he brings. How about this? In verse number three, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. Now, some places might remove the last part of this, but that promise, as every promise of God, comes with a condition. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee trust ye in the Lord forever for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength it is in the Lord that we find the strength to fear not it's in the Lord that we find the strength to faint not it is in the Lord that we find the, the strength to fret not if we're going to truly understand happiness, we're going to have to go back to our verse we started with, Psalm 144, 15. That last part, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Why? Because thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. If you're looking for happiness, you're not going to find it in the job. If you're looking for happiness, you're not going to find it in the money. You're looking for happiness, you won't even find it in family. You're not going to find it in family. If you're looking for happiness, you're not going to find it uh, in the places you can go for the fun and enjoyment. You're definitely not going to find it in the bar rooms. You're not going to find it uh, in, in the social settings of Facebook. You're not going to find it in all the different areas the website can offer. If you're looking for happiness, it's going to have to be found in the Lord. Where you can learn to fret not because he loves you. You can learn to faint not because he holds you. And you can learn to fear not because he keeps you. And when we have that perfect peace, because our mind, our hearts, everything, with, everything about us is stayed on him. 
then through that, I can enjoy happiness without fretting, feigning, or fearing what life is going to throw at me. You say, well, preacher, what's the first step? Very simple. First step, do you know the Lord as your Savior? You can't have your mind stayed on Him, and you will not focus on Him in the flesh. The flesh can't do it. Therefore, the Spirit has to be awakened. The Spirit within us cannot be awakened without the Holy Spirit of God being instilled through the promise of salvation. The moment that we, I received Christ as my Savior, I received the Comforter that now dwells with me. And that's the Holy Spirit. Triune God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Say, explain it all. I can't, I can't, I can't. That's where you trust God's Word. You trust who He is. And you by faith follow. But I believe with all my heart, it's biblical that until you first know the Father as a child of God, you cannot understand the peace of God and the happiness He can bring without first knowing Him personally as your Savior. So first step is, if you don't know Christ your Savior, if you're not saved, if you were, if you were to die today, you don't know where you're going to spend eternity, there is your first step to finding genuine happiness. After that, as a child of God, it, keeps, it comes by keeping my mind stayed on Him. It comes by remembering happy is that people whose God is the Lord. My God can't be my job. My God can't be my car. My God can't be my sports. My God can't be my... Anything else you name that this world makes a God. You say, well, how do you know it's a God? If it takes more time in your life than your time you're spend, you spend with God, it's a God to you. <gasps> well, that's not fair. That's just Bible. The children of Israel, every time they got their eyes off of God, it's because they focused on something else besides God. Anything that takes our focus away and spends, we spend more time on this than we do on our relationship with the Lord, that right there takes precedence over God, which means that we're distracted by this. This has become more important to us. Therefore, it has become my little G-O-D in my life. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be anything. If it takes the place of the one who should be our God, then we let it become God to us. May not bow down and worship it, literally, but in our hearts we've given ourselves over to it. Be very careful. Happiness is found by those people whose God is the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for your people again being here in your house. And I pray, Lord, as we've looked at this simple but yet still powerful truth of finding happiness i pray that you help us to understand and see in our personal lives areas that might be robbing us of the joy and happiness that we can find in the lord lord if there's something that's in our life that's taking precedence over you over our heavenly father i pray that you help us to be able to recognize that even this moment. Holy Spirit would pinpoint some areas that's stealing our joy, stealing our happiness because it's a forgery. We think it's going to bring it, but it's just taking us away from the very individual, the very person in our life that can give us happiness, and that is our Lord and Savior. Well, if there's one here that doesn't know you as their personal Savior, if they've never received you and the forgiveness that you offer, I pray that they would understand that need and they would receive you today before walking out those doors. They'd get the matter of salvation and eternity settled in their heart and in their life. For the child of God here, I pray, Lord, you'd help us to understand what it might be that's pulling us away from you. From your ability to show us and allow us to experience a true, genuine peace and happiness in our lives. I pray, Lord, you take this time of invitation coming up shortly. That, Lord, you would place in our heart how we're to deal with you. What we're to bring to you. Lord, that you might do a work in us and through us. With heads bowed and eyes closed. 
Is there anybody here this morning say, Preacher, I'm not sure that if I died today, I'd go to heaven. I do not know for sure, but I would like to talk to somebody about that issue of salvation. I, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to spend eternity. But with nobody looking around, if that's you, would you raise your hand and say, Preacher, that's me. I'll be honest. I need to talk to somebody about salvation, about eternity this morning. All right? Then, child of God, very simple. Are you struggling with happiness? Is there anything the Holy Spirit just kind of laid out before you in your mind and said, this right here takes more of your time than God does. This right here pulls more of your attention than spending time with the Lord. Is there anything that's taken His place? You're not going to find happiness until God is put back where He belongs in our lives. I don't know what it is. If the Holy Spirit dealt with your heart, give you an opportunity to deal with Him. Let's all stand. The invitation's open. If you need to come to this altar, why don't you come and spend some time with the Lord? If you can't kneel at an altar, spend some time right there in your seat. As the piano plays, invitation's open. You do what the Lord has laid on your heart, what the Holy Spirit has told you to respond to. Thank you for being in God's house this morning. And uh, I hope this morning we tried to be a little bit of an encouragement, just more of a directing us. How is it that God wants to bring about happiness in your life? What is it that Satan's using to get in the way of that happiness? Don't let things, don't let stuff, don't let even people get in the way of what God wants to offer. You want to find happiness, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Again, thank you for being in God's house. We'll be back. Don't forget, uh, men's and ladies' prayer time is going to be at 540. Any of you ladies that might want to go to that ladies' retreat, um, when is that going to be? It's in September, all right? So all the details, you got to show up tonight, okay? You show up. Uh, at 540 at the ladies meeting she'll have all the details for you but um, if you're interested in possibly going to that ladies retreat if you just want to know what it's all about why don't you come here at 540 meet with them fellas we will meet and pray um, and especially tonight if you would come and we're, we're going to pray especially the Lord will bless VBS and uh, allow us to see some some young folks come that we might be able to be a blessing as well to the the children and the families that are all represented there. And so why don't you come join us at 540 and then we'll look again at, uh, at patience. We're dealing with patience for the third Sunday night in a row. And um, who knows, we might just get one little step further and you'd be even more patient in, until we reach the end of that one. But um, I don't know about y'all, but it doesn't take one service to help instill patience in me. It takes multiple services to, uh, to look at that. And so... But we'll, we'll go back to that tonight. And so I look forward to seeing everybody back in your place this, this evening. All right? Let's go ahead and pray.